Modi, Modi, you can't hide. Modi, Modi, you can't hide. Ten years ago was the first time that Modi came to the U.S. since he was banned a decade before that after earning the nickname the Butcher of Gujarat for overseeing the massacre of thousands of Indian Muslims. And where in America did the Butcher first choose to visit? New York City, the home of the Lady of Liberty. Having first orchestrated the 2002 Gujarat genocide, Modi then came here in 2014 to desecrate and defile our national spirit by reveling in the impunity that he received after his acolytes had ripped, ravaged, and raped their way through untold numbers of innocents in India. His atrocities be damned. Modi was a rock star in New York City, rising to rule through a regime rooted in a Hindu nationalist ideology which seeks to replicate the Third Reich of the Nazis, Modi's reign has predictably been marked by lynchings, massacres, and recurrent rhetoric calling for the genocide of India's religious minorities. Inevitably, Modi has jailed activist after journalist after academic after politician all while springing rapists from the Gujarat genocide out of prison as he allows fascism to run rampant throughout India yet he was not merely content to destroy the world's largest democracy. No, no. Modi has come here time and time again to relish in his rock star receptions. But he also had to start meddling in our own country's internal affairs, especially our politics to maintain our government's willful ignorance towards Modi's maniacal goals for India he had to mold his own American minions members of state legislatures members of the US Congress even candidates for U.S. President who would maliciously spread Modi's message, his manipulative message, that no, no, Modi is not the fascist Fuhrer that your mind perceives, but rather a messiah, not content merely to fill his pocket with American politicians. Modi had to think had to take things one step further. Modi wanted to fully disrobe our nation's lady of liberty. Modi wanted to strip away the rights not just of Indian citizens, but even also of American citizens. In the ultimate act of sacrilege, of sacrilege against our national sovereignty, Modi decided to take out a hit on a U.S. citizen. Oh, and for our purposes here today, this was not just any random U.S. citizen. This was a U.S. citizen living in New York City. Barely one year ago, the Modi regime attempted to assassinate an American citizen who lives in New York, and now, just three months after the attempted assassin was indicted, Modi has the audacity to appear here, mere miles from where his plot failed. Having already injured us, Modi now insults us by coming to New York 
not as a disgraced man begging for mercy and forgiveness from each and every one of us, but rather as an intruder yeah. intending to groom and to guide his groupies how to further his agenda to gain and expand his sway over our nation. No longer then, no longer then does opposing Modi merely mean taking a righteous humanitarian stand against his regime's Mephistophelian designs on India's religious minorities. No, today opposing Modi has become the duty of every true American patriot as it now means defending the sacrosanct status of our nation's sovereignty. So, just as was the case a decade ago before Modi became the Prime Minister of India, once again we declare Modi is not welcome in America as we did once before we raised the clarion call to ban Modi's entry to our United States. Once more, we cry out, 